Every single day, more than 1,500 Americans die of cancer. That's more than half a million every year. Many cancer patients are waiting desperately for new treatments, but on average, developing just one new cancer drug costs more than a billion dollars, and it can take years. Tonight, in collaboration with Business Week magazine, we investigate why. Dr. John LaPook has the second part of our series, The War on Cancer, Where We Stand. Dr. Oleg Loran is filled with hope. Soon, he'll have a new treatment to offer his kidney cancer patients, a vaccine designed to stimulate their immune systems to fight the disease. There's just one catch. Of course, it is a breakthrough. The only place that cancer patients can get this treatment is here, in Russia. Why? The reason has to do with the way the FDA approves cancer treatments. The vaccine was tested in a five-year clinical trial, but there was no statistical evidence that it helped patients live longer. However, Antigenix, the vaccine maker, looked at a group of patients in the trial who received the vaccine when their cancer was in its early stages. This group seemed to benefit. On average, it increased the time before their cancer returned by almost two years. That was good enough for Russia, which approved it in April. And the company plans to submit it for approval in Europe soon. But for it to be considered in the U.S., the FDA would require a whole new trial. What would it cost you in time and money? Another seven years and probably about another four or five hundred million dollars. So can you do that? We can't do it. And neither would anybody else. Garrow Arman founded Antigenics 14 so years ago, one of many small biotech companies with big ideas about treating cancer. He believes the FDA drug approval process is too costly and inflexible. We're driven by the fact that drug works and it is our moral and other obligation to make sure that we reach patients. But before any new cancer drug reaches patients in the U.S., it must first pass the review of this man. Dr. Richard Pazder is one of the most powerful and controversial officials at the FDA. If you took this job basically to make people happy, this is not a job to make everybody happy. He's become a lightning rod for criticism by cancer advocates who say the FDA is too slow to approve new therapies. It's an irrational accusation that is made that we're sitting here somehow plotting against the pharmaceutical firms or plotting against a, a particular drug. Pazder says he holds cancer drugs to a simple standard. Do they work? We have to be confident that this is a real drug, that it works for the American public. But is the system working? Although the number of drug approvals has gradually risen over the last 20 years, from 1990 to 2006, only 8% of experimental drugs were approved, a total of just 32 new cancer medications. Not good enough for Kathy Giusti, diagnosed in 1996 with a blood cancer called multiple myeloma. Doctors told her she wouldn't live to see her children grow up. I remember calling my sister and saying, Karen, I am a fighter, I'll fight this, but there's nothing to fight with. So she fought back by creating a myeloma foundation that runs like a business. Researchers, who are usually competitive, now have to share information in order to get funded. We've had four new drugs approved by FDA in the last four years. That's unheard of in oncology. Those very drugs have helped Kathy stay alive. I want to be there every moment for them because I don't know if that may be the last time I see a moment like that. Kathy Giusti has been successful because she's learned to work the system, demanding better cooperation among researchers, drug companies, and the FDA. Katie? She's an amazing person, John. Thank sure you is. so much. For more, you can go to cbsnews.com and click on CBS Evening News, where you'll also find a link to our collaborators, Business Week magazine.